Hello everyone, welcome to Gizmo China. I'm Kieran. About Huawei, you would probably think of the affair happened in 2019. What about I tell you the fact that Huawei is the only major Chinese smartphone brand to grow sales in the first quarter of 2020. Though Chinese smartphone sales dropped an unprecedented 22% during the same period during the COVID-19 outbreak. Amazingly, Huawei saw a 6% rise to 28.7 million phones, which captures 39% share of total smartphones. So, what happened? The Huawei P40 Pro was coming. Well, although the release of the P40 Pro is not the whole story, upgraded photography experience of the P40 Pro probably gave the market confidence and improved its brand recognition. Today we are going to go deeper into this phone and find out what exactly Huawei tried to express. This is a review of the Huawei P40 Pro. Start from the display. The display of the P40 Pro has one of the best first sight visions. Huawei designers redesigned the curved edges to a maximum display coverage. This is called a qual curve overflow display. But if we look at bit detailed, although it does reach a wonderful visual experience, the size up hole punch of the dual camera still leads to an imperfection that we have to accept. On the other hand, the selfie camera has an excellent aperture of f2.2 and support autofocus 4K video. So if you're looking for a smart vlog device with great selfie cameras, it wouldn't really matter to you whether there are disturbing feelings caused the size of the hole punch. Another detail of the depth camera is that it supports facial ID unlock with super high security. As for the display quality, the P40 Pro features a 6.58 inch OLED display with a 2640 x 1200 resolution which is close to the 2K resolution and much better than 1080p smartphones. Compared to the last smartphone model, the P30 Pro, the clarity and color accuracy is improved a lot. But pay attention here, the most correct color model is the standard colored mode. Under the standard mode, the average Delta E is only 1.0 and the P3 gamut coverage reaches 99%. In addition, the P40 Pro display has a 90Hz refresh rate. Working with the Kirin 990 SoC so far, the P40 Pro has one of the most fluent Android phones. Looking back to its cover, Huawei updated a new industrial design including the technology of anti-glazing glass and a new arrangement of the qual cameras. The P40 Pro is in our hand is not the silver version with the anti-glazing glass, but I have to give praise to the silver version I touched in Huawei store. It really led to a comfortable touching feeling, amazing reflection effect under any lighting scenarios. It felt like and looked like the rear material of the OnePlus 8 Pro, which is also using the anti-glazing glass technology. The Huawei P40 Pro runs Huawei's latest SoC, the Kirin 990. Unlike most other Android phones, the Kirin 990 is developed by their own team. Though Kirin 990 is not able to defeat the Snapdragon 865 in most benchmark apps, it is hard to sense the gap between the two chips in daily use. And thanks to the optimized cooperation of hardware and software, the P40 Pro is able to make full use of the 90Hz display in some games. For example, in PUBG Mobile China version, it supports the 90fps mode, and in our gaming test, it did run an average frame rate of 89.5 without obvious jank problem. And then we moved to the 3D mark and tested its GPU performance. The results showed that the P40 Pro can defeat 98% of the tested phones. From the tests we did, the P40 Pro did not match our expectation for a 2020 flagship. Although it's not a gaming phone, Huawei still designed a gaming phone case for the P40 Pro. With the camera case on, you'll have two more shoulder buttons to have a more comfortable gaming operation. Even so, the gaming experience is not the most important selling point of the P40 Pro. The most important selling point of the P40 Pro is still the cameras. This time the camera combination is a bit aggressive. Obviously, larger sizes of lens, a larger CMO sensor of primary camera, and more united camera arrangement. All of these changes made it become one of the most anticipated camera phones in 2020. First, the 50 megapixel customized camera with one at 1.28 inch sensor, matching the RYYB and the CFA allowing 40% light to be absorbed by the sensor can provide not just better sensitization, but also better light gathering, which means it could handle much better in awful lighting conditions. And we'll check out how it actually performs with the sample part. Not just the primary camera, the 40 megapixel ultra wide scene camera is another important upgrade. It is designed not for just wide angle photography, but also for movie filming. Like the primary camera, it can shoot up to 4K 60fps video to simulate the production of scene camera. And then, to cover a wider range of focus, the P40 Pro equipped one more 11 megapixel 5x optical telephoto camera which uses the RYYB periscope structure and OIS anti-shaking technology. So these three cameras actually try to simulate a practical zoom camera. 
If we consider more practical camera movement, the OIS anti-shaking of the telephoto camera and the primary camera help a lot when panning or tilting. But due to the lack of a smoother resolution of switching between cameras, camera zooming of the P40 Pro doesn't achieve the same movement as professional cameras can do. If you want to take some zooming shots, just make sure that the zooming range stays from 0.8 to 8.5 times, or just stays at 8.5 times. And the last camera is a TOF camera, which assists the other cameras to calculate depth information. It will help improve focus speed and optimize the bokeh effect. Let's look at some samples. Well, I have to say the P40 Pro is definitely the best phone for photography, not just because it has the best primary camera, but also the best secondary cameras. While we just give you the best results they've developed, the white balance is much more accurate than the last few generations of Huawei's flagships. And thanks to the larger sensor, all the samples shot by the main camera were able to produce amazing latitude. For example, in these few samples, the exposure exactly took care of both brightness and shadow, and especially saved great detail of shadows. Well, the color has always been the strength of Huawei phones, no exception for the P40 Pro. The 40 megapixel wide angle scene camera also did a great job as the main camera did. The wide angle image quality was even better than some other flagship's main cameras. Generally on most smartphones, shooting a wide angle photo would let me feel a sense of isolation due to hardware gap between a primary camera and a wide angle camera. Usually it was revealed as different resolutions, diverse applicable camera settings, different image colors and shooting experience gap. But on the P40 Pro such feelings was almost gone. You don't need to think of the best setting for wide angle camera and the image quality was also wonderful. It's just like a second primary camera with a wider view. And the five time optical telephoto camera was far more practical than the P30 Pro. With the help of the OIS anti-shaking, it's pretty easy to hold it in hand and shoot perfect long focus photos with stable preview. Another highlight of the camera performance is night mode. This time, Huawei upgraded their night scene solution. In last few Huawei flagships, maybe you would see amazing brightness improvement when turned on the night mode. The new solution made it become much smarter. The higher brightness has been done in the normal mode. If we turn on the night mode, the AI will help balance the exposure of the whole image and make sure there is no color deviation problem which occurred in the P30 Pro. Thanks to the TOF camera, Huawei's aperture mode is more accurate for distance detection. Under the aperture mode, we were able to adjust the bokeh effect after shooting, which gives us a second chance to get exactly what we want. In addition, Huawei also provided some interesting filters, including the three Leica filters and other emotional filters. Take good use of them and let them inspire your creation with better expression. About its filming capacity, here we want to show you a video sample, which is shot by the P40 Pro's cameras. But here I have one thing to complain. When we shoot some photos on the P40 Pro, the preview image was not as good as what the phone can really produce. It's really less clear and less detailed. It's not a big problem, but sometimes the inconsistency would affect my confidence to press the shutter, and eventually found that my worries were unnecessary. About the battery and charging, the P40 Pro is also at the flagship level. 25 minute charging with the included 40 watt charger can bring back 50% power, and we took only one hour to get it fully charged and it also supports 27 watt wireless charging. So that's it. No doubt the P40 Pro is the best camera phone we've seen before and shooting photos on the P40 Pro is enjoyable. Although we did review its camera capacities, there should be some potential we haven't found out on this edge cutting phone. And more importantly, it's not just powerful, but also easy to operate. 
If you like our videos, please hit that subscribe button for us. And if you want to see another camera comparison, please tell us below about which phones you would like us to compare. Thanks for watching. This is Kieran from Gizmo China. We'll see you soon.